Welcome back to another episode of Harmonious at Lunch, the show that fuels your business success. I'm Brandon Gano, your host and guide through the world of harmonious business growth. Today, we're unlocking powerful strategies with industry experts to help your business thrive. If you're a business owner, entrepreneur, or executive, you are in the right place. Join me and our incredible guests today on the journey to clarity, growth, and success. It is time to revolutionize your approach to business. Let's dive in with another episode of Harmonious at Lunch. Welcome back to some more bite-sized business advice. We got an awesome episode lined up today. We're going to go maybe a blast from the past here. We're going to talk about three ways handwritten notes can help you stand out in today's business market. I love this topic. This is a strategy I used in my last business, and I'm excited to hear from uh, the CEO and founder of a company called Handwritten. His name is David Wax, and we're going to we're going to tear this apart. We're going to see how you can stand out in the marketplace. But before we go into that, David, welcome to the show. Thanks for being here. Hi, Brandon. Thank you so much for having me. So I'm, I'm excited for this conversation. I, I told you there that I've used handwritten notes in the past, but I did the old fashioned way, like with my hand. Um, I, I think you have a much cooler product than that, though. So give me give me the background of how how handwritten your company came to be. Sure. So um, I've been an entrepreneur uh since 2004 when i started my first company called um sell it and sell it was a text messaging company we started in the real estate space we grew to outside of real estate primarily to retail and um that type of thing and we were powering brands ranging from auto trader sam's club office max abercrombie and fitch was our largest client and for them we would do text messaging campaigns, sending over a million texts a day. And um, I grew that company to 2000, uh, 2012. And then I sold it and I had a two year earnout, um, which is when you have to stay at the company and kind of help the transition process. Um, during that earnout, I thought, gee, what should I do next? And I realized uh, everybody was inundated with electronic communication, whether it's your cell phone going off, like I apologize, mine went off today, um, or texting or emails or tweets or whatever else. Um, everybody's getting so many pieces of electronic communication, including the million texts, you know, that we were sending a day. Um, but what people don't get a lot of is handwritten notes. So, you know, today the average person only gets between one and three a month. And I thought, gee, there has to be a way to automate this because I wanted to send them and I was clearly too lazy and too overwhelmed with other stuff to do it. So um, started handwritten in 2014 with off the shelf auto pens, which you can Google and find a company to sell you. And the quality um, is linear to the level of effort to start that business. I mean, it's a low quality, hard to deal with device. So after running the auto pen for two or three years, I decided I have no other choice but to build my own robot. So then we went down that process. And now in our facility in Phoenix or Tempe, Arizona, we have 175 robots, each holding a real pen, all writing, um, you know, uh, autonomously between 10 and 20,000 notes a day for our clients. We're the largest in the world that does this, which is not saying much. We're still relatively small, but we're totally vertically integrated. We build the robots in-house. Uh, we program them in-house. We do the whole thing in our facility in Phoenix. And then the product is vertically integrated too. So we get blank paper in, we have two digital presses that print those greeting cards. We cut them, score them, put them on the robots. They're written put on a separate set of robots to write out the envelopes and out they go with real stamp. So we're really kind of at the apex between art and AI and automation. We're kind of in that intersection there. And we certainly benefit from AI and all that, but we're really trying to help people connect in a more authentic way. Granted, authentic would be if you sat down and do, did it yourself, but people you know, just don't have the time to do that anymore. So. That's where we are. And from an entrepreneurial journey, uh, we are self-funded. So the last company was self-funded as well. And then when I had an exit um, from that company, it was a liquidation opportunity or a liquidity event. So I took some of those funds and reinvested them in handwritten. So both ventures 
are 100% self-funded. That's an amazing journey. It's super cool how you you came up with this concept and then made it into a, a business. I, I, I kind of joked in the beginning, I said blast from the past. Obviously, thank you notes are, are and handwritten notes are not new. That's not new technology. But it's interesting that you were, I mean, in 2004, text messaging was relatively new. So you're on kind of the cutting edge of that technology. What made you say in, in 2012, 2014, let's actually leverage the past and bring that back. Was it, was it just because you noticed there was such a low volume of, of handwritten notes? Yeah. I, I, I'd walk into my salespeople and my employees offices and I'd see any handwritten note they received standing up on their bookshelf or standing up on their desk. So not only did they open and read it, but they kept it. And I thought there had to be something there. And then when I went to write thank you notes to my employees and my clients when I was, after I had sold the last company, um, I realized how difficult it was. And I thought there could be value in automating the service and really creating a service for me. I wanted something where I could include a gift card, which we now offer, or include my business card um, on a custom, thick, luxurious piece of stationery. And that's that's kind of the service as it is today. So, um, you know, was it the best business idea? I don't know. I mean, a pure play SaaS play would probably command a higher uh, multiple, but it does fill a need and fit a niche in, and it's been fun to play that out. And then um, from an intellectual perspective, having to figure out how to build robots and re-engineer the company, not re-engineer the product, but the company over and over and over again to scale that process has been very, very interesting. Yeah, I'm sure it is. And let's not rule SaaS out. There's always time. You can always integrate it. Um, but you said something too that's really interesting. And I want to dive into the three ways it can help you stand out. But you said that obviously you're using robots, so it's not truly handwritten notes. Mm -hmm. um, and it's not authentic, as I believe the word you said. I have a piece of paper over here that I wrote on. Uh, I can't even read it. So I, I don't know if authenticity matters for someone like me. Like I, I would rather someone be able to read what I write. So um, what, what's that balance though, of being authentic, uh, being a, a robot, but also you're putting thought into writing the message. Like you have to write the message for the robot to then, right? So 100%. do you see a, a difference in that? Do you see a, a drop off in effectiveness at all? Well, you know, we take pride in the fact that we think we have the most authentic looking handwritten notes. I mean, we vary the line mark, uh, the line distance. So not two lines aren't you know, directly always the same distance apart. We vary the left margin. So it's not like you're writing down a hard edge. We randomize the characters. So it, you know, two O's look different together and apart and throughout the document. Um, and then we warp the characters ever so slightly. Then, it, and it also is in pen so people can smear it and, and it passes the smudge test. Um, if I give you one and I say, was this written by a robot? Of course, you're going to put it under an undue level of scrutiny that you'd never do before. But if I were to just send you one, you'd say, thank you for the nice handwritten note. Mm -hmm. um, but all that aside, even if I tell you, was this written, you know, this was written by a robot, at least you're going above and beyond and deciding to send something more than an email. Because I think the one question I get a lot, and I've become very, I've taken a, a pretty strong opinion on it is this whole question about what's the ROI of a thank you note. And whenever I get that on a podcast, what's the ROI of a thank you note? You know, how much does it cost to send a thank you note? What's the ROI? I want to stick my hands through the camera and strangle them because it says a lot about society uh, that everybody wants an ROI off a of thank you note. You know, that, um, you know, whether you use handwritten, my company, or you actually sit down and write it, you need to be sending thank you notes. You know, there's a million uh, products that probably compete with your product. And if there isn't, you can go on Alibaba and have it made. There's a million services that compete with your service. Um, and thanks to the internet, there's just unlimited choice and unlimited abundance and, and hundred percent transparency. So the fact that somebody chose you or your product, you need to thank them for that. I don't care what the ROI is. And I think anybody that does, um, needs to take a bigger look at themselves, a deeper look at themselves. But that's that's the number one question. And then people say, well, 
is it authentic? And this is nothing new. I mean, prior to handwritten and the robots and all that, if you write in a letter to the head of TWA or, you know, Pan Am or, you know, one of these airlines that no longer exists, but I want to put you back in the 1960s and you wrote them a complaint letter or a letter of praise or whatever, you'd get a letter written by the CEO back, but I'll bet you dollars to donuts. That was not actually their signature. Their secretary signed it or somebody else signed it. Or if you gave a donation to a, a cause, um, it might come from a fleet of volunteers that sits down to write donation uh, thank yous, but it doesn't come from the people at, that actually work at that nonprofit or support that cause. It's just a bunch of volunteers that are given a bunch of pizza. So is that any more authentic than having a robot do it? And the benefits of the robot is that they don't get grease stains on that card. The first note looks as good as the last. They don't have to stop for coffee or bathroom breaks or smoke breaks, and they don't uh, quit after their fifth letter. So, you know, there's just, this isn't new. This has been done for a long time. We're just doing it in a different way, basically. I would argue it's more authentic, to be honest with you, because in all those scenarios that you gave, the, the person it's coming from was probably not even aware that it was written. Right. In most cases, at least here, if I, if I were to send you a thank you note, I would have gone on to your site, typed out what I want, and then chosen the card stock too and sent it. So Correct. apples to apples, I would say your product is, is way more authentic than anything you just described. You should work with me, my man. Yeah, I, I appreciate that. You know, it really, it is, you know, I always joke, Hallmark's slogan is when it's good enough to send the very best. Our slogan should be when it's almost good enough to send the very best. When, when you want to send the best, you're going to sit down and write it yourself. But if you don't have that time or that scale, you know, let's say you're running an e-commerce and you want to provide everybody kind of, um, you know, a consistently good user experience, then you involve handwritten to help you with that. So that's that's kind of where we're at. Um, and it's yeah, it's interesting. The use cases, nonprofits are a really big one for us, for example. Yeah, that makes sense. And uh, I'll tell you what, I'm not going to be writing my own. I won't even show you this piece of paper because it's embarrassing. Your robots definitely couldn't copy it. Uh, sure. It's that bad. But I want to I want to unpack this a little bit. The first time I heard about handwritten thank you notes was actually the, uh, and I'm sure you know the story, um, at least that scale, was the CEO of Home Depot back in the, I think, 80s or 90s. And he would write five a day to his employees just to like express gratitude. I thought that was incredible. And from then on, I, I always incorporated it into my last business. Every person that placed an order with us the, on the top of their their box or their their order was always a handwritten thank you yep. note, uh, not for me still, for my team, because they wouldn't be able to read it. But um, how do you recommend we use this product, uh, handwritten thank you notes, to stand out in the marketplace, specifically in business? I mean, there's a million different use cases, but for business owners and entrepreneurs, what, what are those three different ways that we can use this to stand out? Well, the most obvious is sending a thank you after a purchase or after a meeting, and we can through the powers of Zapier, we can take your words and automate them. So it could be, you know, this is the template I want to send somebody and you could have a million merge fields in there. So if they bought a, you know, a brown leather mid-size couch from you, the note would say, thank you so much for your purchase of the couch, not thank you so much for your purchase of brown leather mid-size couch, because nobody would write that. Or, you know, thank you so much for your purchase of the couch, I'm sorry. Um, nobody would write all the descriptions. So, you know, we can help you craft it so it's authentic. The second use case is follow-ups, almost marketing, you know, come in for a, a test drive of the new car or, you know, it's time for an oil change. Kind of staying in cadence with that customer. So it's not just about thank you, but it's about staying in communication over the lifespan. And I'm not saying do this, you know, 12 times a year, I'm saying maybe three to four times a year tops. Um, and then the other two cases, and I know it's, you know, birthday cards is a big one, holiday. Um, and then outside of that, you, so so number one is thank you. Number two is follow up. And those are those use cases. And the final is prospecting, which that one you should look at the ROI. You know, if you are selling I don't know, you know, some low value, low margin item um, prospecting probably isn't going to make sense for you. But if you're selling houses and you want to build 
a community, you know, where you, the area that you, you serve, you want to really build a name for yourself, circle that area on a map with us and we'll send everybody a handwritten card in that area. Or if you um, are a new dentist and you've opened your practice, same thing, draw a one mile radius around your, your practice and we'll send everybody a handwritten invitation or a jewelry store or um, Bugatti dealership, you know, those types of things, handwritten notes make a lot of sense for, but, um, you know, if you sell car stereos, maybe not. So, so you know, the, the, it's kind of prospecting, ongoing drip, and post-transaction thank you, I think, are, are the three big use cases. And then prospecting, we can automate through our website, just go in circle maps and, you know, set parameters. Um, Post-purchase, we can automate whether you're a Shopify store or um, a nonprofit, we can integrate through BlackBot, Razor's Edge, which is the big nonprofit platform. Or um, if you're a car dealer, we integrate with all the DMS systems and all that. So, so we can integrate, we can automate that too. And then the final one is the ongoing drip. And that we can automate through our website. You go in and set up a multi-step drip. Or if you have Salesforce, we integrate with Salesforce. There's a lot of ways to do all this to really allow you to scale your outreach in ways you didn't think were possible. Yeah, those are those are amazing ideas. And it, it just has me thinking too, you know, you said you're not in the SaaS business. That would have been a smarter play. But it, at sure first place, you know, yes, if, yes. If, <laughs> you're, you obviously, have you have a SaaS product. Yeah. Um, but it to me, at first glance, it sounds like, this is more manufacturing. You're very much building a, an integrated tech solution here with everything that you currently have. And I'm curious to know kind of where, where are you taking the company? What are your plans over the next three to five years? Is there anything kind of on the horizon that you see would, would elevate handwritten to that next level? You know, right now we are, um, the things uh, happy to tell you, we're rolling out uh, some kind of, nice to have stuff for our users like um if you don't know somebody's address you can go on our website type their email address in and then they'll get a, a, a an email from us saying you know um so and so would like your address reply here and fill it in and, and, and we'll handle that we added qr codes which i'm not the biggest fan of in fact um back in 2012 i think so it's been a while um, I spoke at South by Southwest saying how terrible QR codes are. So I'm not a huge <laughs> fan of QR codes. Um, and I'm a little worried that by putting those on our service, people are going to see no response and blame handwritten notes, not blame the fact nobody likes scanning QR. But that's that's a different topic. Um, you know, we're going to we're, we're expanding internationally now as of the middle of may you'll have the option to send canadian notes with canadian postage within canada so if you put a return address as canada and the two addresses canada we drop ship to assist uh, a partner in canada and they put it in the mail for you and then we're going to do that for pretty much all international expansion whether it's uk australia wherever that is we'll we'll offer that kind of service too i mean right now everything gets a international stamp, but that doesn't really pass muster for some. Um, so those are kind of the things, the robots themselves, you know, we're doing a lot to reduce risk, improve throughput um, of orders and that type of thing. So the way we stuff cards is very, very different today than it was a year ago. Um, I don't want to bore people with automated envelope stuffing technology and data matrixes, but, but that's kind of what we do. Um, the, the core offering is almost, um, uh, maturing to the point where I don't know what else I need. I just need a really big sales force to go sell it. Um, that's kind of where we're at. That makes sense. And you would think, you know, naturally you'd get distracted to the point of saying, you know, you'd bring in other services like flowers and right. cupcakes and cookies. I, it's interesting to see the path you're taking. Cause it's very much still in line with growing the core product. Um, I, I like that. I, I respect it. This is yeah. fascinating. We do some fulfillment, like we'll do books. Um, we have a whole bunch of books that like the author will send us, we'll send out with a handwritten note and then we'll, you know, incorporate and that could grow. It's just such a, it requires so much space and, um, I, you know, 
yes, we differentiate because we have, we have the handwritten note, but is that enough of a differentiating factor? I don't, I, I, I don't know to compete against all the three PLs out there. So we're trying, you know, or compete against like Sendoso or something like that. You know, there's a lot of those gifting platforms out there. Um, I'd like to, but I think we'd have to go out and raise a bunch of capital to do that. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, I, I love this topic. I love this episode. I think it's been fantastic. Um, I put your website on the screen here. It's also wherever you're watching, listening down below in the show notes. Um, so I, I love to end these questions or these, these episodes with a question, just something to get the listener thinking about um, how they can use what we've heard today, what you've, what you've shared with us and move their business forward a little bit or, or just make a difference in their life. So around this topic, and it could be even something that you've asked yourself in growing your business. What, what is that powerful question that you want to leave the listener with that they can think about for the next day, the next week to help them move their business forward? That is a great question. I would say, I mean, usually I'm asked for my words of advice, not a question. So I appreciate that. I would say, um, what are you waiting for? What are you waiting for? Because I think so many people get caught up in analysis paralysis and you know they they're they're just so uh, or they are they're they're concerned about the um risk of going into a venture or expanding their venture but if you don't do it if you don't start and adjust and iterate you're never gonna succeed um and a lot of people keep waiting and waiting and waiting until they think the time is right but with every day um you wait you have more and more responsibility on yourself whether you know one day you're single next day you're married and now you have to care for two people or now you're married let's start a business the next day you have kids it's only going to get harder so or you know and you can go down that list so what are you waiting for today is really the best day to start a business how can you make that leap uh, that's a great question what are you waiting for uh and what are you waiting for go check out handwritten.com Go see if you can start sending thank you notes to your your clients, your prospects. I love this. I, I know where I'm going after we start stop recording here. Uh, David, thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much. Appreciate for it. For those of you watching, listening, wherever you are, make sure you subscribe. We love bringing this ridiculous show to you every single day of the week. Just get you out of that little bubble you find yourself in your business and get to that next level as soon as possible. Build a harmonious business. That's what we're all after. We'll see you on tomorrow's episode of Harmonious Hill